Hello. Hello, iOS fans. It's the agents of Death, Death Gorge. Gorge. Oh, yes. I walked into the Valley of Death. Gorge. Et etc. Et yeah. Uh, it's Death Gorge. It's here. We've got a copy. And thank you, Games Workshop, for sending it to us for us to peruse and play. Yes. Yeah, we were sent this. We should say that at the top of the video, we were sent this lovely copy by Games Workshop. So thank you to them. And uh, what do you think of it, Pete? <sighs> This is our ninth core box release now. I think so. There's so many, and that doesn't even include the starter sets. No, it doesn't include the starter so, sets. I think, but I think there are nine core boxes from Warhammer Underworld season, and then we've had a couple of starter sets as yep. well on the way. Yep. Um, it's, I'm, I'm starting to get release fatigue on, on core boxes. We talked about that in our preview video. I, mean, I think a lot of people are. Yeah. I do feel like the six-month release cycle on core boxes is a bit much for us. But we might do another video, a separate video about that. Yeah. Because we want to talk about the positives about this. Because yes. there is, although I was like, oh, a bit jaded. A bit jaded. Now we've played a game. We've been a bit uh, busy and sick and things. We haven't played as much as we would like before making this content. But, you know, it's still exciting when you get a new warband. It's, yeah, and, and it's I like the, the new jazzy... Uh, boards and things yeah so, the yeah. artwork and all that kind of stuff there is still that ooh, about it or when you get it yeah. I feel like you just have to get over that initial hump so we're just going to talk about obviously Death Gorge right now we're going to do some separate videos as Robin says around the rest of it and our views and opinions on that but we're here to talk about Death Gorge and what it means for you out there if you're a, a new person to the game or if you've been in it since the first season like we have we're going to try and cover all the bases in this one yeah we're not going to go into deep dive specifics as the warbands we'll make a separate video on those as well look out for those in the coming weeks hopefully before the game's actually available yeah oh it's a squid that's a squid. Well, we might as well start with the models yep i mean the warhammer underworlds models are always pretty solid there's very yep. few warbands and you just think oh, i really don't like these yeah um i didn't enjoy putting the slanish models together but maybe they maybe that's just what they wanted me to feel <laughs> yeah yeah i mean slanish was probably quite happy about it yeah the squidly was probably the most difficult one of all of these to put together although i have noticed there because they've got lots of skirts they, they there's more obvious mold lines on these models which you don't get necessarily like on some of the skirt. others no no i've got a, a big crack <laughs> um, apt for slanish in the slanish model which i i uh, if i was a better model that i could probably remove uh, but yeah, I'm not. So, I so, so it's staying. <laughs> um, I don't think they're the worst models to put together in the world. No, there have been they certainly weren't. worse seasons and worse war bands. They're about average, middle of the road. They're not. They're not particularly challenging. Painting wise, they. I, I don't know whether it's because I've been painting a lot of the um, Shatterpoint models recently, which are very obviously Star Wars themed, which are very clean lines yeah. and, and not, not much too detail. much paraphernalia. Um, but these just feel really hard work, and it took me a really long time to actually enjoy painting them. You know, when, you know when you're painting and you get to that, oh, I just really kind of hate this, <laughs> and then suddenly it all comes together. It took me so long to get to the it all comes together point. Uh, and I'm reasonably pleased with them now, but it was it was hard. They're, I think of the core set warbands recently, they're the they're the hardest ones I've had to paint. I've I've been struggling to work out how to paint these. I'm obviously slap chopping mine, which does help with a lot of the detail on Games Workshop models. Slap chopping, dry brushing it all heavily before you paint anything at all yeah. definitely helps bring out all of that detail. And there is they, a lot on. They the look models. really nice, and they're only yours are only partly finished, but they look really nice at the moment. I really like that. The you've benefit got, of you've, slap chop. They you've look got finished that, even before you start. You've got that slap chop because your scaven were slap chopped. They were, yeah. And um, you've got that slap chop off. Off pat. You should do. I don't a, know if you should do a video about how to do it. Don't know if it's going to work as well on these because they've got much cleaner lines and ah. they need texture on some. So, but so far painting them hasn't been too onerous. So not too bad on the modelling and the painting front. Excellent. Everything that you get in the box is obviously enough for two people to play a game. You get uh, the warbands and their cards. You get two other rivals decks as well. Again, we're going to do another video about those in a bit more detail. But suffice to say that there's plenty of combinations in there to get a good selection of games in whether you're a new starter or a seasoned pro. Magic is back in quite a big way in this yep, box. So yep. my warband, the Slanish warband, had two two wizards yep. and I think both decks have got five spells in them. Yep. And I've got a few, uh, mine had a few upgrades with spell actions on them. So Magic is back. I do know one of the rivals decks that come with it has also got magic in it. The Force of Frost deck has yep. magic. So there is magic is back, which I think a lot of people will like because I yep. think magic is one of the kind of favourite mechanics for, I think for thematic purposes. I mean, actually, it's normally quite weak. Yeah. Um, but it is, there's something fun about doing the extra spell it, dice. It's the, slight, it's the slight chaoticness of it all that it oh. could work and be brilliant 
or it could not work and be terrible. And yeah. you can go for the safe options of the gambits where you just know it's like, I'm going to do this and it's going to work. But it's just nice to have that spell mechanic to, to give you a chance of maybe just doing a little bit better than you could have done. Um, I think the elves only have uh, one caster, which is Kareni herself. Right. She's the only one in there. She's a level two, but there's still a fair number of spells in there, like you say. You've got some interesting shenanigans as well. You've got that. You've got a knockback yeah. attack with with stagger, she's which is pretty knockback two yeah. with stagger. So and she's got a very normally nice... underpaid, but it felt in the we only played one game, but it felt quite strong because I had to put a ball with a lethal tagger down, which we'll come on to. Yeah. Uh, but it felt quite strong in that game. Yeah, because you can then just shove someone halfway across the board and they yeah. can take a wound from it. Normally they have to be standing right next to it, so yeah. there's definitely some benefits to be said there as well. So the, the board, we might as well talk about the boards now. Yeah. The one board definitely feels a lot stronger to have than the other. One's got like lethals and stagger hexes on both sides of it, and the other one just has some cover hexes and blocked hexes. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I don't really know how other people like to play. I really don't like putting um, stagger hexes, um, particularly lethal hexes, down, especially when you've got three models. Yeah. Um, I don't like having them on my side of the board. And if you're going to split this and play it with a friend, one of you doesn't have a choice because the lethal hex boards are on the same board. Yeah. So that's. Well, I guess if you're playing best of three, you can swap. Yeah. But there's definitely a better and a worse board, I think, in it, depending on your play style. But I don't think most people care about having a lethal hex on their board. No. The the artwork on the boards is a bit cleaner, I think, than Gnarlwood and Weird Hollow were. I think Gnarlwood and Weird Hollow were a bit messy. I didn't like what Weird Hollow. It had those yeah. kind of rope bridgey things that didn't. Yeah, really the weird bamboo, bamboo stuff. Yeah, stuff I didn't that. like that. But these are, I like the blue. Um, I have to be honest, I must, I must prefer blue because I, I like, I like the Haradeep ones as well. I also feel that these boards actually represent, like the terrain that they could be walking on, whereas the Weird Hollow and the um, Gnarlwood ones were a little bit like abstract in their sort of theme, so they didn't quite feel like you were actually on that board, yeah. if that makes sense. Whereas these actually looks like this is the ground that they would be walking on. And yeah. there's and a lethal hex which has some broken ice and stuff. Care about the artwork. It's no, I know. Nice. It's a strange thing, but they are, they are nice, they are nice. Rules changes. We found four. Four. Now, uh, I really wish, I've said this before, I'll say it again, I'm probably ought to write the game, but I really wish at the front of the book, and then on a, or a separate thing we could download on the website, it told you what QR the changes code, were. To the PDF. What are the changes from last time? Because it's really hard. We, I'm, I'm really bad at reading rule books anyway, and then when there's subtle changes in it, I've been through the rule book, try to yeah. look through. Try and look at page to page. But we still found, we found four, um, but and, they're quite subtle. And we found two of them whilst we were literally sitting here about to start recording, when yeah. we had a quick flick through, and then we realised, actually, that's different. Yeah. So they're very subtle changes. And it's really subtle. I guess the major change is to the um, extra feature tokens. So in the game, you get uh, five objectives and then these two extra feature tokens. You still don't place it like you have done in some previous seasons. You still don't place it at the beginning. No. Uh, so it stays off the board. Um, but it's now a blocked hex and a cover hex. Yeah. So the, the objectives are all cover hexes on the, on the back. Um, but uh, this one has a blocked hex. Well, it used side. to be stagger in the in Gnarlwood and yeah. Weird Hollow. And before that, I can't remember if it was stagger in the ones the before gloom. that. Or was it gloom. Oh, it's gloom? Yes, gloom, gloom hexes. Yeah. So, yeah, it's um, blocked hexes is interesting because obviously... Uh, you can't flip them, you can't delve them if you're standing on them because no. you can't flip it onto the blocked hex side. So yeah, so you can do, you can flip these ones, but you can't flip these new blocked ones. You can put them down more easily now. So the yes. plunder action, which almost never, ever, ever got used because it could only plunder numbered objective tokens. Yep. So you can only put one of those back on the board. So for that to happen, someone had to take one off first. And there were only a few warbands that had cards yeah. that enabled you to do that, and there were even less... Um, decks that had cards in that allowed you to do it. But now you can plunder. We completely forgot in our first game, but yep. you can now plunder uh, any of the available feature tokens when you kill something. Yep. So I can I can see those very quickly appearing on the board because you can't remove them once you've placed them, and you can't move them once they've been placed. No. So I can see like the first two kills, bang bang, there we go, yeah, all it, done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But at least it means there'll be some. They're going to get used a bit more because they didn't get used at all in Gnarlwood and Weird Hollow. Good for really. your fearsome fortress deck. Yeah, yeah, Getting that's true. Getting those extra feature tokens down. It's very true, it's yeah, very so true. It's going to be some Fortress a boost. Talking about delving, that's another rules change that's very subtly altered, which is previously each player could delve each feature token once. So if there were the five objectives and the two others on the board, you could you could delve all of them effectively. Yeah, and you could, yeah, even twice. Yeah, even <laughs> twice, yes, exactly. Each. But now at a turn, each player can only delve once 
period in in that yeah, yeah in that so, power step yeah which means if you're like standing on three objectives and you know you want to flip them all over by the end of the term because you want to, I don't yeah. know, whatever it is, objectives or something like that, you're going to have to start flipping them earlier. Yeah, which and is good, actually. I suppose that's why they've put that in. Yeah, it could be. Because you had that thing where you... People just wait until the last activation. Because you get staggered when you flip them. Yeah. And so actually there's no net loss if you stagger if you them. Wait if you wait until the very end, like yeah. Around, now you've got to think about it a little bit more. Maybe that's why that rule's been brought in. Also, if you start flipping them, your opponent might start to guess what you're doing, yeah, yeah. which means that fighter that's flipped it is staggered, they're a bit more vulnerable, yeah. he might try and knock you off and then run onto that and flip it back again. So, so there's, it seems like a small change, but actually... I think it is still quite a small change, but it has got ram deeper ramifications than I first realised. Yeah, not necessarily rules change, but they have clarified reactions and the reaction process uh, a little bit more with the diagram in the rule book it hasn't yeah. changed how reactions work but it's just made it a little bit more obvious yeah with they changed the they sneaked the reaction change in a couple of seasons ago yes so it hasn't changed again but it is a bit more obvious now from the diagram yeah and um, they do like a diagram and actually i think the diagrams added to the rule book have helped definitely over, over the over the seasons so those are the only rules changes that we've found so far and if when you get hold of your copy you spot some other ones do let us know in the comments below so the Slanesh Warband are, are quite thematic. They've got a couple of magic users and they have a, a couple of interesting mechanics in their cards. They have the Temptation mechanic and the False Gift mechanic. Now the Temptation mechanic there are, are gambits, um, on ploys. So if you, you play one and basically you spend a lot of time asking your opponent what it is they want to do. So it might be like um, you can um, either stagger all your fighters or I can push one, that yeah. kind of thing. And they're, 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 they're quite well done. The ones I've played so far are quite well done. They're not as obvious. There's not always an obvious choice. Yeah. Uh, there was one where if you have any fighters that are adjacent to other, each other, either either you... you either everyone took a wound yeah, or, the, or you could literally pick one of my fighters yeah. to give a wound to. So it was quite interesting and you ended up just choosing the one fighter. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so there's some interesting setups there. The false gift ones are quite good too. They're basically things that have a slight positive effect, like maybe plus one uh, armour, but then you slow you down or something like that or the one I played on Pete uh, and, and sort of it uh, what did you do it gave me two shields that's right but I could only have a, a line of sight of two hexes away yeah so any range three attacks I had I, I had to get close to you to be able to use them that kind of thing so. yeah, which actually was quite almost almost quite clutch uh, but anyhow you killed me anyway but not <laughs> <laughs> yeah um, you've got the quite nice the hammer tied mechanic yeah which is pretty good in, in, in a late stage game potentially especially against a small war back. Yeah, but, yeah. Um, because you literally just it goes on about using the the scatter template, but it literally just you pick a direction and you go in a straight line away from your fighter and the first enemy fight you hit takes a wound and is staggered and you keep using that. Yeah. So if you're in the right place and the enemy has charged already and you know you need to do like two wounds to them, you, you can pretty much guarantee to do that damage without having to try at all. So yeah. it it's a very reliable mechanic i think when we saw it originally we thought that you would have to roll the scatter dice yeah. to see which way it went which would make it almost completely pointless but now it's actually quite worthwhile because it also gives the stagger so you might want to use it early, early in the game, game uh, stagger someone to get ready for yeah i mean against a four fighter a four wound fighter like first activation line up stagger them Yep. and then they're staggered and they've only got three wounds left yep. and they're, they're definitely with you do think death from his storm cast it's, it's a horrible um, yeah. for them I think they, they've got a lot of defensive upgrades um, plus one wound um, things that might damage you when you attack them or things that will stagger other people they've got a lot of cards around stagger uh, and they're also they're in spy mechanic and I think for both warbands the inspire mechanic is incredibly fiddly and they seem to be getting fiddlier as they go along. Yeah, I, I'm i still not convinced that it's as complicated as Ephelim's, but it's definitely on a par with Domitan's. Uh, yeah. Domitan had the flip-flop inspire mechanic. Yeah, yeah. Um, but the, your guys, I mean, it's not fiddly, but you've just got to remember when it happens. They will inspire and inspire multiple times, well, six yeah. times in total in the game, because in the first round, they inspire at the end of the third activation. In the second round, it's the end of your second activation. In the third round, it's the end of your first activation. At the end of each round, they uninspire again. So you yeah. do have to remember that. At least with that mechanic, it's always the same. And there is it's that. always everybody. Yeah, there is that. There's never, there's not like, uh, like Ephraim is like, oh, well, can, can I, oh, two people are dead now and I can inspire or whatever. Yes. Or, yeah, that or, can be or a double tans, which is like, oh, well, he's activated now, now I have to change it over. These guys, I think, have the most frustrating inspire mechanic in the game. 
For not, you, anyway. Well, yeah. <laughs> not because... Well, only because I kept rolling successes. Exactly. But not because they inspire on fail. So they inspire on failed dice rolls, which in itself would be frustrating. But the different fighters inspire on other people's failed yeah. dice rolls. And I think that's just crying out. And maybe it's because I'm not very good at the game, but I think it's just crying out to be forgotten. Because when you roll a fail, you normally go, oh, God, I won't fail. Let's get on with the game. Move on. Move on to the next thing. You've really got to keep that in mind that fails aren't necessarily bad. No, and because you, you almost don't even notice, because that's the other thing. If you're rolling multiple dice, it's just like, oh, I failed. And you pick up the dice and you think, oh, I don't actually know. What did I, I actually rolled. roll all fails yeah. or did I roll yeah. one success because in you there? Don't, or? Your brain just does it visually. You don't yeah. actually connect what it was. So then a couple of times we were like, oh. And then I, and then also because because it's not it's not the fighter that rolled the dice that inspires. Yeah. So you're often thinking, oh, you're not even really thinking about who you're inspiring when you're rolling the dice. I don't really like it, I have to say. It's one of those things where I definitely see that you're going to want to position yourself to go, I'm going to charge with this person because hopefully they'll fail yeah. and that'll inspire the person I actually want to be inspired and then I can do stuff with them. Yeah. So They've got a couple of rubbish attacks. So spell attack, which obviously spell attacks aren't that reliable and, and the boss has a one hammer attack. So there's a reasonably good chance if you fail, you know, you're not rolling successes on that. So the, that is, you have got that option there. I just feel like, especially in a tournament setting where things are a bit stressful, it's going to be really easy to roll the dice Forget what you've done, pick them up, and then go, Oh, do you know what I roll? And your opponent will be like, Well, no, not really. I wasn't yeah. paying attention. And then you've got that nasty taste in your mouth that actually maybe I've just screwed myself over, yeah. which I don't like. So, so we'll see be, how it goes. You need to be on the ball with that one. Yeah, I've only played it once, but yeah, you do. It's probably one for your more experienced, more observant players than, yeah. than people like me. So we're out. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, one thing that is, I think, quite annoying is that comparing the two warbands from the box, because obviously a lot of people are going to buy Death Gorge, they're going to break it open with a mate and you're going to pick a warband each is there are quite a few cards for uh, the razors that rely on like three opponents being dead or making three charges or things like that which wow. against an opponent or having three opponents with stagger tokens it's like most of the time you're not going to be able to score them because no. because you only have three fighters to fight against in the first place a lot of them will be good against larger warbands five or six fighter warbands are probably do much better against but against these guys, I think that they're the weaker matchup overall. So there we go. There's a summary about the warbands and the box. Overall, there's not a lot of difference apart from the artwork to separate this from your Weird Hollow and your Gnarlwood. No. And I wonder if GW is starting to hit that zenith point on their rules. But that's a subject for another video, I think. Yeah, I mean, let us know in the comments below. Do you think GW should slow down? Do you think you just they're just too many subtle variations of the same thing there in the game? I'm still enjoying it. Still enjoyed our, our, our preview game. And like yep. I say, actually, as a, as a, as a get, out, straight out of the box gaming experience, the two different warbands, uh, well, haven't, we haven't played them enough really to tell how balanced they are. But certainly the Slanesh warband, it's kind of fun. Yep. It's, I, I don't really feel like it's top level tactical. It probably could be, but I think there's quite a lot of fun interactions of like, well, you know, like the Temptations sort of, you know, you've got to pick. Yes. Um, which I think makes it less crunchy from a tactical perspective because you've can't ever guarantee what's going to happen. It's not like, well, I'm going to play this and I'm going to do one damage, or I'm going to play this and I'm going to push him over there. It's like, well, I'm going to play this and then I'm entirely at my opponent's mercy as to what actually happens. I suspect <laughs> what that will mean is that the top end players will probably take that warband and not take any of those cards. Probably. And they'll take all of those cards out and probably. put in uh, other other power cards they instead are pretty that are more solid. dependable. They've got some solid attacks, so they are pretty good warband. But yeah. there are only three fighters. I, I do find that the elves are a little bit uninspiring model-wise. Um, two of them Certainly I kept the getting. First rounds of each, each, hey. um, <clears throat> the, the, the Squidly is definitely my favourite, but I think overall the Warband's quite solid, so I think they're a good starter option for, for new players to the game and for more experience alike. So there you go. Um, Death Gorge will be out in two weeks. It's up to pre order now, but GW have a two week pre order window now on these. Yep. So look out for a little bit. We've got hopefully lots more content coming. We're going to have some games. There'll be some extra games on our Patreon. So do consider supporting us over there if you want to see extra Death Gorge. Um, but otherwise, watch out for new videos as they come. And we'll see you soon in the Death Gorge.